nasal congestion, post-nasal drip. Millions of people suffer from these springtime allergies, but according to a U of M health expert, nasal irrigation may be one of the best methods at relieving these symptoms. Nasal irrigation can be considered a first-line treatment for common nasal and sinus symptoms. It's often more effective than medications um, or can be used in addition to traditional medications to um, improve uh, nasal and sinus symptom control. For most patients, the benefit of nasal irrigation is that it does a great job treating symptoms that otherwise aren't well treated with medicine. It does a good job of treating nasal congestion or, or sometimes stuffy nose, blocked nose. Nasal irrigation does a very good job of treating the symptom of post-nasal drip. For patients who suffer from spring allergies, nasal irrigations are worth a try. Um, if you have mild allergies, irrigations alone may be enough to control your symptoms. Um, and even if you're on allergy medicine, nasal irrigations may improve your symptom control even more. Nasal irrigation is comfortable if the water is at body temperature. So, so it should be lukewarm water. Um, the purpose of the salt is to make it comfortable. If you don't put any salt in the water, it will burn. Um, so I tell patients if they want to mix up their own salt water at home, use about a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt in eight ounces of warm tap water and add a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. What I recommend for patients um, who are new to irrigations is to use an eight ounce squeeze bottle um, and they um, put the saline mixture in there and with a squeeze bottle they squirt four ounces in one nostril it comes out the other side, and then put the remaining four ounces in the other nostril. To minimize some of the mess, I recommend that patients do irrigations in the shower, or certainly over a sink. Um, and uh, to prevent the saline from coming out of your mouth, you can open your mouth and make the K sound. And the K sound closes off the mouth and throat from the back of the nose, and that way all the saline will stay up in your nose and go in one nostril and come out the other side rather than coming out of your mouth. Common methods that patients use for irrigation in, include using something like a turkey baster to squirt salt water in the nose. Um, any large syringe that you can buy at the pharmacy you can use to squirt salt water into the nose. Um, some patients even use a small bulb syringe such as you would use to suction mucus out of a baby's nose. Um, I think the important thing is that you find a device that works well with your hands, um, that you can manipulate, um, and it should be something that you can clean. There are other ways to put saline in the nose. Another technique of nasal irrigation involves using a device called a neti pot. Um, and a neti pot is like a teapot, and you pour salt water into your nose. So it's poured gently, it's not squeezed in, but it's the same concept. At the University of Michigan, we completed a study um, comparing saline irrigation with saline spray. Um, saline irrigation involves putting eight ounces of salt water in the nose, and saline spray involves a little mist. Um, it's more of a moisturizer for the nose. We found that um, patients um, who used saline irrigation twice daily had a significant improvement in their symptoms. Um, they improved much more than patients who used saline spray, and the amount of improvement was really quite surprising. Patients who used nasal irrigation um, experienced as much improvement as some patients with chronic sinusitis get with sinus surgery.